Heading down to Arkansas, with it being our fourth time going down, we knew what to expect a little bit. Well, it, it was me and Finn's fourth time going down. My dad had been down there a couple times other than when we went. He would fish the big river, we fished the small creek a lot of the times, but we knew what to expect for the most part. Nice healthy one. That seems to be the normal size, I'd say. Here he goes. As you can see, we're here at the boat launch and uh, there are lots of people around, but just caught this ooh, awesome brown. There are some huge, huge brook trout in here, along with nice sized rainbows. There's also huge browns, but uh, oh, brook trout would be awesome. Come up, show you guys. Wow, he's got awesome red on him. I'm gonna get a picture and let him go. All right, one more. Look at this awesome little fish here. Probably, I don't know, 19 inches. Just gonna let her go. Sweet. Take me across the water Cause I need some place to hide I done the rancher's daughter And I showed it hurt his pride We just got a little cutthroat here. There are some good ones in this river. But that's just a little color. It's cool, new species. So now we got <laughs> now we got a brown, tons of rainbows, and a cutthroat. I think the last one is a brook trout. Yep, brook trout. We get a brook trout, that's all however many I just had four. But my life, 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 life. As we flowed down the river, just hammering the rainbows, we came into a section of the river where it braided out and a creek dumped into the river. We were seeing lots of trout in this little creek, mainly rainbows and some brook trout, but we saw some little trout that we couldn't tell what they were.
Is it a brook trout? I know, I know for sure that we've been seeing trout. Okay. I, I've been fishing forever for this little chub. Not cool. I, I've been seeing these trout come up. Dad's over there just absolutely smoking the rainbows. He has another one. It's like his 30th one. But I'm pretty positive I've been seeing brook trout in here. And I know the one we just saw come up was definitely something because it had some color to it. But finally hook into one and it was a chub. And, you know, with that being said, we might just get out of here and go to the other side and rail on rainbows. Because I'm not here to chub fish. That's pretty disappointing. Not gonna lie. I know I've been seeing trout in there. Like there's been color, but I'm gonna give it a few more. I'm gonna give up. See, once in a while they surface, but they and they try to eat my bobber, but they aren't going for the dry fly. So I think it's time we switch up and we go back to the main river for some rainbows. on the, the rainbows, that's a real pretty one there. Hatchery fish, you can see a fence clip there. But yeah, super pretty. So I saw Cut the hole down, it's a straight rainbow, but... Weights on the spins. We thought maybe it was a brook trout just because of how those spins look. But. Finally, in the midst of all the little rainbows, the big brown came out to show. Just caught probably the best brown in the trip in the Norfolk so far. Not so much size wise, but color wise. The gold and orange and yellow and on his adipose fin here, he's got like a real cool dot with a red outline. Just beautiful. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. Hiding in a lot. That big brown really topped off the day. We caught 113 trout, so the next couple days we had high hopes. So the big rivers that we fish, they're all dammed up with a lake up above. And usually the dam has a schedule that they follow. So if the dam was gonna push out water or more water in the morning, then you'd fish the morning for the browns. But they weren't following the schedule at all, which really messed up our plans. We had intended on uh, night fishing quite a bit, but since they started flowing water at night, there was no point in really night fishing. So it kind of made the fishing slow. It just kind of made a whole mess because they didn't follow the schedule. We planned on night fishing tonight, but they released some water, so we went stripping and just got our first brown stripping. Feels good. Shoulders burning, but I'm getting pretty lucky with these casts right now. We're going to get a pick and let them go. All right, one last look at that brown. He's got some cool red in his tail there. Let him go. Oh, 
good one? Uh, no. You almost ripped that. Is that a rainbow? Yep. A little rainbow? A little bow. Just the baby. The fishing wasn't terrible, but because the dams weren't following the schedule, it was hard to predict when the fish were going to be biting. So it was rather slow. And with that being said, we decided to go to the creek. This creek is the best trout creek in the whole world. When we used to come down, this is this creek is all I want to fish. I mean, there are so many big fish in this tiny little creek. We used to catch lots of big fish in this creek. So now that I was the only one young enough to fish it, there was high expectations. The reason the creek was so good is because up above the creek, you had this hatchery. And the hatchery would dump their water into the creek out of these big culverts. And they would go by every, I don't know, a couple hours or once in the morning, once at night. And they'd feed all the big fish in the hatchery. And all the food that the fish in the hatchery didn't get to, it would flow out and flow into the creek. And when that happened, the fishing just got really hot. So this is the broodstock tank that they have. And you can see, I mean, that rainbow right there is all of 20 pounds. Same with that one, that one's huge. Huge rainbows, mainly what they have in here is rainbows. But as you look through, you'll find a couple browns as well. They feed them all these little pellets and whatnot. And here's how it works. So they'll feed them their pellets. And there's actually a few sick ones in here right now. They'll feed them their pellets. And all this water gets sucked down here. And it gets sucked out into those culverts that you see down there. And those culverts push out all the extra food that they don't eat. And so when this truck goes by and dumps all that food in down in the river the water will start to turn a little murky from all the food and extra stuff going down and that's when the fishing gets real good i'll show you guys how crazy they go for food here take a look at this one piece going in as you can see they're hungry they haven't had that truck hasn't came by yet oh well, there's a real red one look at that isn't that just crazy there's a big brown, big German. Oh, wait, we can get double up here. Double up? Alright, well, Finn just, Finn just caught two. Uh, just on a little dry fly. It's still pretty early in the morning. There's a little one. But this one is super pretty. Look how pretty. Oh, hold on. Look how pretty that fish is. The reds and dots on him. He's actually a cut, he's a cut bow. You can see the orange underneath there. So a cut bow is a cross between a rainbow trout and a cutthroat trout. You can see uh, there's a culvert coming out right here. That's what that waterfall is. And that's where all the food coming from the hatchery up above is coming down. So we're using something trying to imitate the hatchery food. seeing an ab more than one but some absolute monsters up in the fast water up there they kind of they stay in the fast water that way you can't see them obviously and at night they come out look at the orange on that one's belly it's pretty cool but yeah that's why there's obviously i don't know if the camera catches it but there are hundreds of fish right here 
a couple really nice ones, like a couple three, four pounders. But there's like, there's like at least two up there that are huge. How big, Ben? Big. Big. Stud little thick. That's a male. Thick male. Look how dark he is. Real dark one. Oh, he's got a little big. Decent. We no, nope, that that one's even bigger. That one's probably 17, I'd say. We switched up. We saw the fish start to grab stuff off the bottom, so we so we switched to a brown nymph, and the nymph is doing a little too good. That's a big one. Just caught this one, pretty good one. Uh, fishing right below the hatchery here and they just like turned the generators on and there's food coming in the river now. So all the fish are eating. So hopefully we catch some more big ones. We're gonna let this guy go, he's pretty ready. Whoa, there he goes. Oh, good one. Then just caught another really, really healthy rainbow. You can see how colored up the cheeks are, all rose looking. Beautiful eyes and almost like that steelhead pattern to the face. Uh -oh. That one. Good job, Penner. Eight fins fly right off the top of the water. The nymph, like an inch under the water, and just drifting it down. Look how, ooh, hang on. Super pretty fish. Skinny, but super pretty. See the red on them there. big ones we've been seeing uh, just on a little nymph there's a lot more in there but yeah this guy's super fat he's like football he's got really good colors so let him go nice fish 
Honestly, we could have stayed and fished the same spot all day, but we decided to move downstream. Got him? I'll get the net for this guy. Alright, so this is that nice one Finn just caught. It's a cut bow, and he's been darting at little trout trying to like nip at them and maybe eat them. I don't know if he's trying to eat them or be territorial, but awesome looking fish there. You can tell he's a cut bow underneath here. Uh, he's not showing it right now, but underneath there he's got that orange. That's how you know they're a cut bow. Again, they're um, a rainbow and a cutthroat. They crossbreed and they make a cut bow. I'm not. Here's the thing, is supposedly in this river, there's zero reproduction, or re what's it called? Reproduction? Repro is that right? Reproduction. Reproduction? They can't reproduce. They, <laughs> they can't reproduce because of the pH levels and the bacteria. So when they lay eggs, what happens is the bacteria eats the eggs. Two things that doesn't make sense about that. One, they don't plant cut bows. So maybe the cut bows are coming from the main river and they can reproduce in the main river they say they can't though well, and two the other thing that doesn't make sense is the hatchery the hatchery has to use the same water it's in this river so how are they reproducing fish in the hatchery something about it doesn't make sense to me i'm not an expert but we're gonna get a few pictures and let them go Once Finn's arm got tired from all the monsters that we caught in the creek, we decided to put my mom on some fish. What is it, Lee? The rainbow rail. Tell us about it. Uh, well, the rainbow rail is something down here in Arkansas, and you go to a little cut like this where it's shallow, rocky, and then it drops off, and you just rail on rainbows. <laughs> Rainbow. Good work. What a big fight. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Oh, he's pretty. Pitch him. You know, although I can't fish the creek anymore, and it's super heartbreaking that I can't fish that creek anymore, there are other little creeks that flow into the big river, and they, those creeks also produce some monster fish. Yes, I can. 